Hello, welcome once again. In this video, we will see how to add abilities to a character. So this video is a compilation of five videos, which we have already posted in the Blueprint Beginners series. Let's begin with creating a project named Character Movement. To animate your character, you will require the animation starter pack which is available to download for free from the Epic Games Marketplace. Click the free button to download and add the animation starter pack to your Epic Games library. From your library, search for your animation starter pack and click add to project. Then from the select the project to add the asset to the menu, search for and select your character movement project file. Then click add to project. Upon adding the animation starter pack to your project, you will notice its presence in the content browser. Now let's create the player character. A character class is required for your player to control. A character is a pawn that comes with a character movement component to provide a locomotion system for humanoid characters to traverse through your world. First click the Add, Import button to create a new Blueprint character class, and name it BP underscore player character. Now double click your BP underscore player character to open its class defaults. Then in the Components tab, select the mesh that is the character mesh, and then Skeletal Mesh component, and navigate to the Details panel. In the Mesh category, select the drop-down arrow adjacent to the Skeletal Mesh variable, and from the drop-down menu, Select SK underscore mannequin. Again, in the details panel, navigate to the transform category and set the mesh's location and rotation to 0, 0, and minus 90. Here your character's skeletal mesh will now be oriented in the direction of the forward facing arrow component. Now, navigate to the components tab to select your mesh component. Then click Add Component and in the drop down menu search for and select Spring Arm. Then name your Spring Arm component, Spring Arm Comp. Now, navigate to the Details panel and in the Camera Settings category enable the use Pawn Control Rotation. Enabling the use of Pawn Control Rotation will rotate the camera relative to the Spring Arm. Then navigate to the Transform category and set the Spring Arm Comp's location to 0, 0, and 50. Now go to the Camera category. Here, set the Socket Offset to 0, 0, and 30. With your Spring Arm Comp selected, click the Add Component button. Then in the drop-down menu search for and select Camera to add a camera component named Camera Comp. In the Components tab, select the Character Movement component, then navigate to the Details panel, and in the Character Movement, Rotation Settings, Category, enable Use Controller Desired Rotation and Orient Rotation to Movement. In the Character Movement, Walking Category enable the Ignore Base Rotation variable. Setting Ignore Base Rotation to True will tell the character to maintain its current world rotation, and ignore any changes in the rotation of the base it's standing on. In the Character Movement Nav Movement category, navigate to the Movement Capabilities and select the drop-down arrow to reveal additional variable settings, navigate to the Can Crouch Boolean and click to enable it. Now compile and save. Now let's create input key mappings and input movement events. You will need to set up some custom logic, that will move your character when an input key, such as W, A, S, or D is pressed. So, navigate to Edit, then Project Settings, and then Input. Then in the Bindings category, click the plus sign next to Action Mappings to add the jump with key value spacebar. Then crouch with key value left control. And lastly, sprint with key value left shift.
Now, in the bindings category, click the plus sign next to axis mappings to add the movements to axis mappings. Name move forward a lot key value W and S, and set the scale to 1.0 and minus 1.0. Then add in name move right, a lot key value D and A, and set the scale as 1.0 and minus 1.0. Then add another in name turn, a lot key mouse X, and set the scale to 1.0. And lastly add in name lookup, and a lot key mouse Y and set minus 1.0. So the final mapping looks like this. The character can now walk, run, turn, look up down, move around, sprint and couch. So here we wrap the input key mappings. In the coming video, we will see how to integrate the input movement events. In this video, we will see how to add abilities to a character. Now that you have completed the axis and action mapping for your move forward, move right, look up, and turn, jump, crouch, and sprint inputs. Now you will integrate the same in the blueprint event graph. Now in the content browser, Double click your BP underscore player character to open its class defaults. Go to event graph. Then right click on the event graph and in the drop down menu search for move forward and select move forward. Drag off from the execution pin of your input axis move forward node and in the drop down menu search for and select for the add movement input node. Then connect the axis value pin of the input axis move forward node to the scale value pin of the add movement input node. Right click on the event graph, and in the context menu, search for and select get control rotation. Then drag off the rotator U pin, and in the drop down menu search, for and select break rotator. Drag off from the break rotator nodes Z, yaw, pin, and in the drop down menu, search for and select make rotator. Then drag off from the make rotator nodes rotator return value pin. And in the drop down menu, Search for and select Get Forward Vector. Drag off from the Get Forward Vector node's Vector Return Value pin, and plug it into the Add Movement Input node's World Direction pin. Right click on the graph again, and search for and select Move Right, for your Input Axis event. Drag off the Execution pin of your Input Axis Move Right node, and in the drop-down menu, Search for and select for the Add Movement Input node. Then connect the Axis Value pin of the Input Axis Move Right node to the Scale Value pin of the Add Movement Input node. Drag off from the Make Rotator node's Rotator Return Value pin and in the drop down menu, search for and select the Get Right Vector node. Then drag off from the Vector Return Value pin, and plug it into the Add Movement Input node's World Direction pin. Your completed Movement Input Events Blueprint graph will look as it does below. Right click on the Event Graph. Then search for and select for the Input Axis Lookup Event node. And then again right click, search for, and select for the Add Controller Pitch Input node. Drag off from the Execution Output pin of the Input Axis Lookup node, and connect to the Execution Input pin of the Add Controller Pitch Input node. Drag off from the Axis Value pin of the Input Axis Lookup node, and connect to the Val pin of the Add Controller Pitch Input node. Right click on the event graph, then search for and select for the input axis turn event node, and then again right click, search for, and select the add controller yaw input node. Drag off from the axis value pin of the input axis turn node and, connect to the val pin of the add controller yaw input node. Now click compile and save. At this point in the process, your blueprint graph should look like this. 
Now let's create the input key mappings and input action events. Now that you have completed the blueprint scripting logic, for your move forward, move right, look up, and turn input events, you will need to finish implementing your action mappings for your jump, crouch, and sprint input events. Right click on the event graph. Then in the all actions for this blueprint drop down menu, search for and select your jump action event. Drag off from your input action jump nodes pressed execution pin. Then in the drop down menu, search for and select the character function jump. Now connect the execution pin of your input action jump node to the execution pin of your jump node. Drag off from the input action jump node's released execution pin, and in the drop down menu, search for and select the character function stop jumping. Right click on the event graph, and in the drop down menu, search for and select the input action sprint. Navigate to the Components tab, then click and drag your character movement component onto the event graph. Drag off the character movement pin and from the drop down menu, search for and select, set max walk speed. Then connect the pressed execution pin of the input action sprint node, to the input execution pin of the set max walk speed. Drag off from the character movement pin, then search for and select for another, set max walk speed node. And then connect the released execution pin of the input action sprint node, to the set max walk speed execution input pin. Right click on the event graph, and in the drop down menu search for and, select your input action crouch. Drag off from the input action crouch nodes pressed execution pin, then in the drop down menu. Search for and select the character class function crouch. Drag off from the input action crouch nodes released execution pin. Then in the drop down action menu search for and select the character class function uncrouch. Compile and save your blueprint. Your completed blueprint should resemble the image shown. In this video, we will see how to add up game mode. The game mode defines the game's set of rules. The rules can include how players join the game, game pausing, and level transition, as well as any game-specific behavior, such as win conditions. The game mode is set for each level, and game modes can be reused in multiple levels. This video covers how to create a game mode blueprint, and set default values for it, how to assign a default game mode, for your game, and how to override the default game mode, through the world settings, and game mode override option. Now let's create a game mode blueprint. These steps will guide you in creating and setting up defaults for a game mode blueprint. We are using the blueprint third person template, However you can use any project you wish. In the content browser, click the add new button. Now select blueprint class from the create basic asset section of the drop down menu. You can create several different types of blueprint assets from the blueprints option under create advanced asset. Choose a parent class for your blueprint asset. There are several different types of blueprints that you can create. However before doing so, you will need to specify the parent class in which the blueprint will be based. Selecting a parent class allows you to inherit properties from the parent to use in the blueprint you are creating. In the pick parent class window, select the game mode base class. This is the parent class for all game modes. So create a new game mode. In a new blueprint class, when the pick a parent class menu appears, select game mode base and name your new game mode class BP underscore game mode. Double click BP underscore game mode to open its class defaults. Then navigate to the Details Panel Classes category. Under the Game Mode are several options that you can set as the game's default settings, like Default Character, HUD, etc. You will need to create these separately, then specify them for use in the Game Mode Blueprint in order to actually use them in your game. 
and for the default pawn class, select BP underscore player character. A character class is required for your player to control. BP player character is the pawn that comes with a character movement component to provide a locomotion system for humanoid characters to traverse through your world. Compile and save your blueprint. Now let's see the how to assigning a default game mode. Navigate to edit, and then project settings, and then maps and modes. And in the default modes category, select BP underscore game mode. Now that you have a character, that is a BP Palier character, that possesses the input functionality to move in your level, XO now play. So here we have compared the game mode which is the default, and the updated game mode with a character as a player in the third person template. In this video, we will see how to create the locomotion blend space. Once we have completed the setting up of the game mode, now let's create the locomotion blend space. Now that you have a character that possesses the input functionality to move in your level, you will need to create blend spaces for your movement states, sprinting, jogging, and crouch walking. Blend spaces are special assets that allow for the blending of animations based on the values of two inputs. You will create your own blend spaces that move between forward and backward, and left and right movements, based on the character's movement speed or direction. In the content browser, click Add, Import and then Animation, and then Blend Space. When prompted to pick a skeleton, choose the UE4 mannequin skeleton. Then name your blend space Locomotion BS. Double click to open the Locomotion BS blend space. In the Asset Details tab, Navigate to the Axis Settings category, then select the arrows adjacent to the horizontal axis and the vertical axis to see more variable details. In the horizontal axis settings, change the name variable to Direction, then set the minimum axis value to minus 180, and the maximum axis value to 180. In the vertical axis settings, change the name variable to Speed, then set the maximum axis value to 1000. Now compile and save. Navigate to the Asset Browser. Then within the filter search bar, type Idle Rifle Hip. Then drag and drop the Idle Rifle Hip asset into the blend space at direction 0.0 and speed 0.0. Repeat the previous step, inserting the Idle Rifle Hip asset into direction 180 and speed 0. And then direction 90 and speed 0. Again direction minus 90 and speed 0. Lastly direction minus 180 and speed 0. In the Asset Browser tab filter search bar, type Walk FWD Rifle Iron Sights. Then drag and drop the Walk FWD Rifle Iron Sights asset into the blend space at direction 0.0 and speed 250. Next, in the Asset Browser tab filter search bar, type Walk Elt Rifle Iron Sights. Then drag and drop the Walk Elt Rifle Iron Sights asset into the blend space at direction minus 90 and speed 250. In the Asset Browser tab filter search bar, type Walk RT Rifle Iron Sights. Then drag and drop the Walk RT Rifle Iron Sights asset into the blend space at direction 90 and speed 250. Then drag and drop the Walk BW Rifle Iron Sights asset into the blend space at direction 180 and speed 250. Then drag and drop it again at direction minus 180 and speed 250. In the Asset Browser tab filter search bar, type Walk BW Rifle Iron Sights. In the Asset Browser tab filter search bar, type Jog Food Rifle. Then drag and drop the Jog Food Rifle asset into the blend space at direction 0.0 and speed 500. Navigate to the Asset Browser. Then within the filter search bar, type Jog Elt Rifle. Then drag and drop the Jog Elt Rifle asset into the blend space at direction minus 90 and speed 500. Navigate to the Asset Browser. Then within the filter search bar, type Jog RT Rifle. Then drag and drop the Jog RT Rifle asset into the blend space at direction 90 and speed 500. From the Asset Browser search bar filter type Jog BW Rifle Iron Sights. Then drag and drop and jog BW Rifle Iron Sights asset into the blend space at direction 180 and speed 500. 
then drag an additional jog BW'd rifle iron sights at direction minus 180 and speed 500. Complete your blend space by navigating to the asset browser. Search for and select Sprint FWD Rifle Iron Sights. Then drag and drop an Sprint FWD Rifle Iron Sights. Asset into the blend space at direction 0 and speed 1000. Now compile and save. Your completed locomotion BS will look like this. In this video, we will see how to create the Crouch Locomotion Blend Space so let's begin. With your Locomotion Blend Space complete, you will now need to create your Crouch Locomotion Blend Space. In the Content Browser, click Add, Import, and then Animation, and then Blend Space. When prompted to pick a skeleton, choose the UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. Then name your Blend Space Locomotion Crouch BS. Double click to open the Locomotion BS Blend Space. In the Asset Details tab, navigate to the Axis Settings category. Then select the arrows adjacent to the horizontal axis and the vertical axis to see more variable details. In the Horizontal Axis Settings, change the name variable to Direction. Then set the minimum axis value to minus 180 and the maximum axis value to 180. In the vertical axis settings, change the name variable to speed, then set the maximum axis value to 300. Navigate to the asset browser, then within the filter search bar, type crouch idle rifle hip, then drag and drop the crouch idle rifle hip asset into the blend space at direction 0.0 and speed 0.0. Repeat the previous step, inserting the crouch idle rifle hip asset into direction 180 and speed 0 and then direction 90 and speed 0. Again, direction minus 90 and speed 0. And lastly direction minus 180 and speed 0. In the Asset Browser tab filter search Barth and select Crouch Walk FWD Rifle Hip, and place at speed 300 and direction 0. Then select Crouch Walk Elt Rifle Hip, and place at speed 300 and direction minus 90. Then select Crouch Walk RT Rifle Hip, and place at speed 300 and direction 90. And lastly select Crouch Walk BW'd Rifle Hip, and place at speed 300 and direction 180, and minus 180. Now save and compile your Locomotion Crouch BS. Your completed Locomotion Crouch BS blend space will look as shown in the image below. In this video, we will see how to creating the animation blueprint. You will require an animation blueprint that will determine what character animations to play based on the current actions by the player. Additionally, you will need to set up a state machine to create a walk and crouch state, then set up the transitions between each of them. So let's begin. In the content browser, click add, import and then animation, and then animation blueprint, and when prompted to pick a skeleton, Choose the UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. Then name your animation blueprint as Player Character AB. Double click Player Character AB to open the animation blueprint. In the My Blueprint tab, navigate to the Variables category and select the adjacent plus sign to create two Boolean variables and name it as is crouched and is jumping. Click the Event Graph tab. Then drag off from the Return Value pin of the Try Get Pawn Owner node. Then from the drop down menu, search for and select Cast to BP Player Character. Drag off from the As BP Player Character Return pin of the Cast to BP Player Character node. Then search for and select Get as Crouched.
navigate to the My Blueprint tab. Then from the Variables category, drag and drop the As Crouched variable onto the Return pin of the Get As Crouched node. Drag off from the cast to BP Player Character's Output Execution pin and connect it to the Input Execution pin of the Set As Crouched node. Drag off from the as BP player character return pin of the cast to BP player character node. Then from the all actions drop down menu, search for and select get press jump. From the my blueprint tab, navigate to the variables category. Then drag and drop the as jumping variable onto the return pin of the get press jump node. Drag off from the set as crouched node output execution pin and connect it to the input execution pin of the set as jumping node. Compile and save your player character AB animation blueprint. Now from the variables category select the adjacent plus sign to create two float variables named speed and direction. Drag off from the as BP player character return pin of the cast to BP player character node. Then click to enable the context sensitive box and search for and select get velocity. Drag off from the get velocity node's return value pin and from the actions drop down menu, search for and select vector length. In the my blueprint tab, Drag and drop the speed variable onto the vector return value pin of the vector length node. Next, connect the execution output pin of the set as jumping node to the execution input pin of the set speed node. Drag off from the as BP player character return pin of the cast to BP player character node, then search for and select get actor rotation. Drag off from the Get Actor Rotation node's Rotator Return Value pin, and from the drop down Actions menu, search for and select Calculate Direction. Next, drag off from the Vector Return Value pin of the Get Velocity node, and plug it into the Velocity Input pin from the Calculate Direction node. From the My Blueprint tab, click and drag the Direction variable, and drop it onto the Float Return Value pin of the Calculate Direction node. Next, Connect the execution output pin from the set speed node to the execution input pin of the set direction node. Drag off from the event blueprint update animation node's execution output pin and connect it to the cast to BP player character node. Now compile and save your player character AB animation blueprint. Your completed animation event graph will look like this. In this video, we will see how to create the animation state machine. State machines provide a graphical visualization of organizing the animation of a skeletal mesh into a series of states. These states are governed by transition rules that control how to blend from one state to another. You will use your Boolean variables to transition between the different locomotion blend spaces that you created in the earlier sections. So let's begin. Inside your player character AB animation blueprint, navigate to the anim graph. The anim graph is used to evaluate a final pose for the skeletal mesh. Right click on the anim graph and from the actions drop down menu, search for and select add new state machine. Rename your state machine node to locomotion, then double click the node to open its graph. Drag off from the entry pin and from the actions drop down menu, select add state. Name the new state movement, then double click to open the movement state node. Navigate to the Asset Browser and search for Locomotion BS. Then click and drag it into the graph. From the My Blueprint tab, click and drag your speed float variable into the Blend Space's speed vertical axis. Navigate back to the My Blueprint tab. 
then click and drag your direction float variable into the blend space's direction horizontal axis. Connect the animation pose output pin to the animation pose result pin of the output animation pose node. Now compile and save. Navigate back to the locomotion state machine, then click and drag the movement state node to create a new animation state named crouch movement. Double click the transition rule node to open its anim graph. From the My Blueprint tab, navigate to the variables category and drag your as crouched boolean onto the can enter transition input pin from the result node. Navigate back to the locomotion state machine graph and double click on the crouch movement state to open its anim graph. From the asset browser, search for your locomotion crouch BS, then click and drag it into the graph. From the My Blueprint tab, Navigate to the variables category and drag your speed and direction float variables into their respective pins on the locomotion crouch BS. Then connect your locomotion crouch BS animation pose into your output animation pose result pin. Now compile and save your animation blueprint. Navigate back to the locomotion anim graph, then click and drag off the crouch movement animation state and connect it to the movement animation state. Double click the transition rule node to open its anim graph. From the My Blueprints tab, click and drag the as crouched boolean variable onto the anim graph. Select get as crouched, then drag off from its output pin and in the drop down actions menu, search for and select not boolean. Next, connect the not boolean's return pin to the can enter transition input pin. Compile and save. Navigate back to the anim graph, then click and drag off from the movement animation state and select add state. Rename this animation state to jump. Then double click to open its animation graph. Navigate to the asset browser and search for jump from jog, then drag it into the graph. Finish your jump animation state by connecting your play jump from jog animation pose to your output animation pose result pin. Navigate back to the locomotion anim graph, then double click the movement to jump transition rule node to open its anim graph. Inside the transition rule anim graph, navigate to the My Blueprints tab and drag your as jumping boolean variable onto the result nodes can enter transition input pin. Navigate back to the locomotion anim graph, then click and drag off the jump anim node, and create a transition to the movement anim graph node. Double click the jump to movement transition rule node, to open its anim graph. From the My Blueprints tab, click and drag the as crouched, and as jumping boolean variable, onto the anim graph. Then drag off each of their output pins, and from the drop down actions menu search, for and select not boolean. Drag off the not boolean output pin, and search for, and select for the and boolean. Connect both the as crouched, and as jumping not boolean node output pins, into the and boolean nodes input pins. Then connect the and boolean's output pin, into the result nodes can enter transition input pin. Navigate back to the locomotion anim graph, then click and drag off the crouch node, and create a transition to the jump node. Double click the crouch movement to jump transition rule node, to open its anim graph. Inside the crouch movement to jump transition rule, anim graph, navigate to the my blueprint tab, then click, and drag your as jumping boolean variable, onto the result nodes, can enter transition input pin. Navigate back to the locomotion anim graph, then drag off from the jump node, to create a transition to the crouch movement node. Double click the, jump to crouch movement transition rule, node to open its anim graph. From the my blueprints tab, click and drag the as crouched, and as jumping boolean variables, onto the anim graph. Drag off from the as jumping boolean output pin, and from the actions drop down menu, search for and select, 
the not boolean, then drag off from the as crouched boolean output pin, and search for and select, for the in boolean. Connect the as jumping not boolean output pin into the and boolean input pin. Then connect the and boolean output pin into the can enter transition result pin, to complete the transition rule. Your completed locomotion anim graph will resemble this. Navigate to the anim graph, and connect the locomotion pose output pin, into the output pose result pin. Now compile and save. From the content browser, double click your BP player character to open its class defaults. Then in the components tab, select the mesh component. Then navigate to the details panel animation category. And in the anim class variable drop down menu, search for and select player character AB. Now is the time to test your logic. From the toolbar select play, you will be able to control your character's movement, using the W, A, S, D keys. To sprint, click and hold your left shift key, to crouch, hold left control, and to jump press the spacebar. Hope from this video, you will start to move into building in more advanced mechanics, in an easy to follow step by step approach, which will allow you to play around and build your own content, to eventually build your own game. Thanks, thanks a lot, see you in the next video.